several announcements this morning. If you have a poinsettia that you um, purchased for our sanctuary, they need to be picked up today or we will be discarding them. They're looking kind of like they need to go to a new home. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there is a new flower sign-up sheet for the 2022 year for placing flowers in the sanctuary on the altar. Um, and that will be ready next Sunday. If anybody is interested in providing flowers during the year for special, um, in memory of or in honor of, it's very nice to have a calendar to look at and you can sign. Some other information, if you'd like to um, do online giving, if you um, go online and you want to um, give to the church, there's a, a place now that you can don't give your donation either as an honorarium or as a memorial with a notation made to who that is for. And that can be now done online and that's something that's been added. So that's really nice, I think, to be able to contribute in that fashion. Now today at 4 o'clock, we are going to gather here in the sanctuary to undecorate the Christmas tree. And we need some people who can especially climb a ladder or carry some heavy things. If you can help us out by being here at 4 o'clock, we would really appreciate it. I want to also tell you that we received a nice thank you from the Epworth staff. It says, thank you for your generous donation of gifts to support and love on the upstate kiddies, or kiddos, I'm sorry. The joy experienced by them on Christmas morning will provide memories that will last a lifetime. One last thing before we start, we will have a brief trustees meeting um, immediately after church today here in the sanctuary. And um, these are the people that need to, to attend. M.B. Ulmer, George Scott, Glenn McGinnis, Patty Lightly, Jim Bowlby, Kyle Long, Grass, and Paulette McAllister, Jeremy Ritz, and Martin Boyd. If I called your name and you are here, please stay after church for our brief um, meeting. Just like right up here in front. Um, if there is no other pattern. Oh, let me remind you. Yes. Do that first. Let me remind you, we have a communion today. If you haven't picked up your communion cup, they're in a basket in the narthex. You can go get one of those. And we have another special announcement. I'd like to ask Vicki if she would please come here. <coughs> so, folks, um, we all volunteer here, and we are. Without me, we couldn't do it. Um, we've had a special volunteer since our church has been um, providing online service. And um, she's sort of become our unsung hero. <clears throat> Sorry, that baklava was really good. <laughs> but, uh, um, so we want to thank her today um, and recognize her and show our appreciation because she is always behind the camera and very seldom in front of the camera. So Amanda, we want to thank you so much for doing what you do. We don't know how we would do it without you.
rise for our call to worship. Sing aloud with gladness. God is gathering the people. From the farthest parts of the earth we come. All who struggle, all who labor with me life. Those who are weeping, God will console. Those who get lost, find a clear path home. Let us worship the God who gathers us. Thanks, Stanley, please, and join me in Angels We Have Heard on High, number 233. <laughs> Things that are happening across the country, the wildfires in, in Colorado, the continually rising numbers of COVID cases. Please uh, do, do our due diligence here as we wear masks if, if we're closer than six feet. Um, be mindful of the washing of the hands, there's sanitizer around. Uh, we are grateful that you all are well and that you all are here. Uh, let us pray. 
Loving God, we have lists of prayer concerns in our hearts and minds, a list of people for whom we pray this day. But first, we want to thank you that you brought us through to this new year, 2022. We lift to you our thanksgiving in that private closet, that private place with you. Let us pray. Place. We kneel before you and we lift to you those places we know we're missing the mark. We confess our sins to you and ask forgiveness. Let us pray. into this new year, may we truly let go of those things that are not giving highest service to us, that we might be more like you. We pray to be more loving. We pray that you would give us goals and tasks ahead that would serve you and serve your kingdom. We ask that you would hear us as we thank you for pouring your light into all the world, especially those places that are in darkness some darknesses have now come just to shadow. Some things in the shadow have come into the light. Continue to evolve us, that we might become your people more and more, more like love, more like peace on earth and goodwill to all than we've ever been before. We ask that you would be within those places where there are natural disasters and that you would be with those who represent us in UMCOR who are there uh, on the ground to help uh, for flooding and for uh, fires, for all the, the ways that UMCOR is able to help and that we are able to reach out and to do for others. Show us what our personal appointment and assignment is in this world. Now that we are aware of things that happen across the globe, Help us to respond to those things you would call us to. We pray for our world, for our governments, for every institution that makes decisions that affects uh, our populations. We pray that you would share your wisdom with those decision makers. Uh, may we be more transparent that there might not be things done in the shadow that go unchecked. We ask that you would continue to walk with us on this earth we ask that you would hear us as we thank you for the milder climate, for the ups and downs of the weather, that we might see your beauty in all that there is out there. We ask that you would hear us as we lift names to you of those uh, for whom we pray. Let us pray. <laughs> places, especially those places we can't get to this day, the hospitals, the, the waiting rooms, those on the front lines with COVID, those that are so tired. Give them new energy. Send to them new light for the work that they have chosen and been called to. We pray now the prayer that Jesus taught disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Miss Kathy Stokes is going to come and give our children's message. We have some children with us today. Yeah, come on forward. All the children come up front with me, please. You want to sit right here? Did you all have a good Christmas? Yeah. It's over with, isn't it? Not quite, though. We still have a beautiful tree to look at and the downtown in it. It's all lit up. I want to talk to you today about light and dark. Okay. How many of you are afraid of the dark? It's okay. You don't need to be embarrassed if you're afraid. We've got one here that's afraid of the dark. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it when it's so dark that I can't see. I, I, I'm not afraid of the dark. Good. I'm not afraid of it, but I respect it because I don't like to walk in the darkness when I'm walking to my mom's house. I'm afraid if I'm in the dark, I might put my foot in a hole and sprain my ankle. What about if I have to get up during the night to go to the bathroom and it's so dark that I can't see and I stub my toe or I trip over something? I don't like that. So I have to carry a flashlight with me, right, so I can see my path, the path that's dark in front of me. Oop, there might be a hole I don't want to walk into or a fire ant mound, right? So having a light helps us find our way in the darkness, right? Or having a night light, something that we can see, then we'll, our path is illuminated where we can see where we're going, right? Well, in the Bible, there's uh, John the Baptist. You may have heard about John the Baptist. He was telling us that the light of the world was going to be sent by God. Now, who do you think he was talking about? Light of the world. Jesus. Jesus. This little baby in the manger, Jesus. How did he become the light of the world? Um, no. I think you're on it. Because of what he did. He, um, uh, saved everybody. he saved everybody. What Jesus did is he taught us how to be a light in the world. He showed us how we should love our neighbor, how we should be fair and kind, and how we should help those people in need. That is shining our light in the world. Being a very positive, helpful, loving, and kind person is like shining our light into the world. So when we pray to God and to Jesus, we say, please let us be that light. For the other people who are living in darkness, who need a word of kindness or uh, uh, some encouragement. So that's how we can be lights. So let us have a little prayer, if you don't mind. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God let me be a light to those who need some kindness and care and let them see the love of God in my life. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go forth and be lights in the world. We're going to illuminate the path. We're going to show people that they can have a better way to walk in life, right? There's some treats in that little basket if you want to get one on your way back, okay? Thank you. Let us continue our worship as we bring God's tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Loving God, we're so grateful for every gift you give to us. We return a portion of the gifts you've given, that they might be multiplied for your kingdom, right here at Inman United Methodist Church and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen.
In addition to these references to the Lord as light, Jesus also said about himself in the 8th chapter of John, verse 12, Jesus spoke to the people saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We pray persistently that the light of God will shine into this world, into every place that is still in shadow. As we navigate this current surge of COVID, it may seem sometimes that the light of our spiritual home is absent in our world. And so we are led to ask, where is God in all of this? Where is the light of the world now? Have we taken a good look at all that the light of the world is illuminating in this generation? There are places that are now fully in the light that were once in total darkness. Let's review what we've experienced in our world in just the last four years. The light of God shining where there has been shadow. Things most of the world has been clueless about, or at the very least, we haven't known the extent of what was happening in the darkness. The light has begun to shine on these things that were previously in secret. Think of this. Four years ago, we saw the emergence of the Me Too movement that brought awareness to sexual abuse, the domestic violence, and the sex trafficking that had been rampant in our world. Men like Harvey Weinstein, who used his power in the film industry to compromise talented young actresses for over two decades, all that which was done in the shadows and in secret has now come to light. The list, mostly of men, but also some women who have been accused of abuse and then resign their positions, of their mostly prominent positions in entertainment, in the news industries, resign their positions in education, in government, and in religion. Those lists are astounding. The Weinstein effect is a thing now. It's defined as a global trend in which allegations of sexual misconduct by famous or powerful men slash people are disclosed. The first of a worldwide wave of allegations were made in the United States in October of 2017, when media outlets reported on sexual abuse allegations against film producer Harvey Weinstein. The allegations were described as a tipping point or watershed moment and precipitated in a national, let's say a global reckoning against sexual harassment. And still men like Dr. Larry Nasser, who is said to abuse 368 young girls in gymnastics over 14 years, still there are some who are being brought to justice. And the woman this week who was also accused was convicted what a clear example of the light of God being shown into the shadows on behalf of the abused and the oppressed. This darkness was brought into the light of public knowledge only four years ago. A year later, flaws in the legal and education systems as well as issues related to race, religion, and immigration came to the forefront. Again, our collective understanding and the need to become more aware of the abuses, our enlightenment has become the outcome. We have the clear evidence in front of us. And still there are some who would deny it or choose to stay in darkness. That choice has created a rift in our world. One way is a path of fear, the other is a path of the acknowledgement of our previous ignorance and a walk into the love and compassion, working to right the wrongs. To be enlightened is to see clearly. To see clearly is often to be horrified but by what has come to the light. But until the wrongs come to the light, how can we possibly work to make it right? How can we acknowledge and reform wrongdoing 
reform, reform, as in having it be made new. How can we do that if we don't see that there is a problem? In our personal lives, if our behavior and damage to others is hidden to us, it will continue. Until we become aware and see clearly how our words or our actions are wronging others, we can't know a change is needed. We have to come to the knowledge of our sin. Then we can confess it to God and to those to whom we need to ask forgiveness, those we need to make amends to. Until we repent, until the light dawns on our understanding, our free will reigns. Until we ask for help, ask for forgiveness, our God will not interfere with our actions in the shadows. It is the same with humanity, with our culture, with our collective sin. In the last four years, we've reached the tipping point for sexual abuse. In the last three years, a tipping point for the tolerating of abuses of racism and abuses by the wealthy, the hiding places and loopholes of which were built into our systems of business, education, government, and religion. Two years ago, COVID arrived and severe travel restrictions were imposed. The light dawned that at a personal level, we have to make choices we never faced before. We have had to be practical and disciplined in realizing that the goals, uh, the goals that were realized, and the goals that are still in reach, even with those restrictions. Our health and well-being have been more our own responsibility than ever before. America and the world shut down in March of 2020. And two much months later, when George Floyd was killed, the racial abuses still at work in our culture came into the light. In the middle of the health crisis, the public tolerance for allowing racial injustices to continue came to an end. As our lives were restricted in service of our health, those on the path of fear began to take justice into their own hands leading the masses to the streets in a rebellion to the shrinking freedoms we have all experienced. Where is God in all of this? Where is the light of our spiritual home? Here's the good news. The light of God is shining into a world with less darkness now than ever before. Our God is showing us that we can no longer plead ignorance. We see the oppression. We see the third world countries without the vaccines and the literal hunger of so many of our brothers and sisters. In the middle of all the remaining darkness, the confusion, uncertainty, the lies, what we are witnessing is an ever-growing gap between two realities path of fear and the path of love. The path of fear includes an unwillingness to face the truth, blind trust in questionable authorities, a lack of boundaries, dissolving common sense, scattered energy and the bending of ethics to suit immovable perceptions. That path of fear has brought and could bring continually devastating consequences to many of our brothers and sisters. And yet, there is light. There is good news. Parallel to the path of fear, there is another path on which a complete spiritual revival is taking place. The path of love is alighted with God's presence and grace. The light of our spiritual home is shining brightly our way ahead. The path of love is sadly not a detour around the adversities that we face, but the path of love shows us that we are to remain kind in the face of adversity. We are to remain gracious and generous and compassionate 
as Jesus teaches us. We are to honor that we are being reformed even when we can't really see what's going on in the chaos. We are being made new by a God who is leading us home. God is leading us home right through the chaos, home to peace on earth and goodwill to everyone. We might have a way to go yet. So as we begin our new year, let's not hide from adversity, but follow the path of love right through the center of it. We may find that relating to people with vastly different points of view will prove more and more difficult. Yet even if we disagree with our friends or family's choices, we can acknowledge that our God has granted free will to everyone. We can respect each one's right to choose different beliefs than our own. We can choose to exercise selflessness, keep our humor, please God, and focus on seeing the beauty and the balance in our lives. Jesus modeled a way to walk in peace in the midst of adversity. We've had a model, have had models for us to go up into the hills or wherever to spend time alone with our God. We have had models for us to travel lightly through life, getting rid of all that is unlike love or getting rid of our stuff that no longer serves our highest good. We can, with God's help, be a light for those around us. Let's be like those who, like the one we follow. Let's be those who are at peace in the midst of the chaos. We cannot do that by ourselves. So we might dedicate this time of Holy Communion to having the divine download in us what we need to stay on that path of love. Please turn to the bottom of page seven for our invitation. <coughs> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. The top of page 8. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are our Glory to God. Amen. And the great thanksgiving, I have different words, but your words are the same. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in you, whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. Your Spirit anointed Jesus to teach, to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to announce that time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivering us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my body, blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is done. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. If you'll keep your finger on page 11, we're going to come back to that prayer. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one, for we all eat from the same loaf. bread that we share is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup that is poured out for us is the lifeblood of Christ's love. And now if you will carefully take the cover off of the, the host. Take the wafer, and it's time to eat that wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the bread of heaven. And in the same way, carefully, uncover the juice. This is the cup of salvation poured out for you. Amen. Let us pray. Page 11. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is The First Noel, page 245. Okay. <clears throat>
benediction, let's say together what we believe. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who works in others and us through the Spirit. We follow in the way of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect in creation, loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, and seeking out hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class, or orientation, is a child of God. We are connected because we are family. We gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, we love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Those of you that are on the trustees, please join me right up here in just a moment. Let us go from this place. The light of the world has come. Let's receive that healing light into our lives. Let's receive that light of understanding into our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. 